That's probably most visible in the cyan. In this particular case, we have quite a well-behaved set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck a few of these. Um, there. Now, one of these data sets is crazy, as you can see. And this, uh, you know, done on purpose for today so that you can see what kind of thing is going on here. Uh, but what you can see in this particular graph for cyan is that you have these particular data points, but curve has some corrections that it really wants performed. And now you can go to each channel and make a decision about, and this is quite a whacked one, about um, how you want things to appear, how, how many data points you want, how many control points you want. And I'm going to zoom in on this part of the graph, okay? And I can see just for the you know sake of of example here that perhaps at uh, oh I don't know 41 percent or somewhere near 42 percent, I should probably have another control point here. So I'll go over to the thing on the right here, click plus, type 42 and hit return, and Curve adds that control point to the set of control points. You can see it it, it matches the curve shape that uh, that Curve actually wants us to do. So using this method you can zoom in and make sure that you have the right kinds of control points that you want in uh, coming out of Curve. The Curve is doing the hard work for you basically. And, and you can also make your own choice here about whether or not you want to take advantage of a really high dense high resolution curve and follow a crazy curve all the way along or if you want to put fewer data points in there, not necessarily follow the bumpiness of your system. F you know, fewer control points means a smoother system. It may be at the cost of, uh, of, of, uh, of accuracy, but it will be smoother. So this is a new feature that, that I, I really like because I always felt that if you had a rip that could uh, would allow a number of different control points in there, it wasn't always easy to determine how many you should do. Uh, you should do a lot or a little where you should put them. So, okay. As before, you can go under the gray balance. You can turn the gray balance on or off, and you can go into the options and determine uh, where you want, wh whether or not you want a, a new feature, basically, that we call precision gray balance, which is normally on. But if your data is kind of whacked, like in this particular case, you might want to uncheck this, and it, uh, it can smooth things some. Uh, and the gray correction threshold is the same parameter as it was before, basically, where it starts it starts to feather off the correction from a certain point onward. So that particular area is uh, unchanged. Now, when it comes to exporting data, uh, we've definitely expanded on the options that we have available to us. Um, in addition to a text file, and I'll talk about that in a sec, you can now export curves in a Photoshop curve file which you can import into Photoshop. If you go into Photoshop, go into Curves and say Load, you can load this in. Uh, or you can export it as a device link profile. And so uh, it saves it out as a device link. This is not a device link like a proofing system device link where it's a complex color transformation between two different uh, color spaces. It's a very simple file that basically has no transformations in it except for the curves themselves. Uh, but if your workflow system allows the use of device links, or if you want to do testing or even the application of curves in Photoshop, like CS4 or later, or if you have a plugin for Photoshop that allows device links, then an earlier version of Photoshop you could do it with, uh, you can now do it with device links. And uh, this can be very handy for testing. In fact, we built it in really for testing purposes. It made it easy to spit out a file that contained you know, as high resolution curves as we wanted that you could bring into Photoshop and apply to problematic files or whatever and then print and test. Um, but we found that uh, there's a lot of interesting opportunities. In fact, Don Hutchison did a lab at the uh, PIA Color Conference in Phoenix last week uh, w basically using device links to simulate the press runs so that you could learn, you know, and watch uh, the corrections take place without actually having a press and the expense and delay of all that sort of stuff. So it could be useful for training purposes as well. The other uh, possibility here is a text file, and there are a few different formats that we support. The CGATS format is a pretty typical one that Curve used to export, certainly is available as well. Um, uh, the TED file format, which is a new uh, file format that we like, it's been presented to us as a, as a possible 
uh, I don't know, hopefully maybe sometime in the future, a standard. It's a simple file. It's XML format. Um, and its, its whole purpose in life is to hold curves, just multi-channel curves or even a single curve in one file. And we're hoping that RIP vendors uh, will support this kind of file and other workflow vendors could support this kind of file. It's not a, a something of our invention. And strictly speaking, it hasn't been officially announced yet, but we, we thought we'd put it in here because it really was easy to support. And now no one can say that there's no such thing as a, 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 an application that'll create these. So it kind of ends the catch-22. Now, we'll, it's easy to remember, and I don't think there's anything else called a TED file in our industry. So it makes it you know unique and should be pretty easy to pass around. Now we do have uh, the the SAG for RIP information didn't get in here as, as when we when we shipped 2.0, but we'll be putting it in soon. And we we are eager to support different RIP file formats so that we can spit out files that are easily imported into different RIP systems. So if you have a RIP you want supported, whether you're a manufacturer or not, let us know. Send us example files if you have them, and we will do what our what we can to get them in there. So there's a, a couple of buttons here that you may have uh, noticed, you might not have noticed. Um, one of them is this calibration run report button. So we've we've expanded the reporting capabilities of Curve significantly. Uh, in the first version, it would spit out this text that was really a bare bones print, and the kind of the sole purpose of it really was to um, basically get this list of values here on the right printed so you didn't have to write them down or do some sort of screenshot hack or something. Uh, but we've expanded on that significantly and there are two different kinds of reports that are available now. The calibration run report basically summarizes uh, the graphs and the information that you've seen in front of you as well as the customer information and all that sort of thing. I'll do a quick preview here so we can see it. That basically, as I said, it summarizes the, uh, the the information you may have typed in at the beginning. Uh, it's it puts in the customer's name, Joan Printing, and report prepared by prepared by information. So if you do reports for customers and you get your name in there, that sort of thing. Uh, obviously, it has the control points as well. Some graphs and some of the statistical information are all summarized under this one report. And basically, you could you could print one of these f as a result of every run that you had done. Uh, it's basically a per run report. Uh, you could consider it sort of a pre-press level report or a customer level report to give you a, an idea of what's going on, that sort of thing. Okay. Now the second report, you can see it's a significant upgrade from the kind of report we had before, and they do print well in black and white overall. I'm uh, pretty happy to say that they look great in color, but if you don't have access to color when you're printing one of these out. Uh, they do look good in black and white as well. Now another report that's available is the printing guide. Uh, both of these are available when you pull down the file menu, although uh, it may confuse some that if you're in the setup area, for instance, it's disabled. And that's because they really are run-specific reports, so you need to be looking at a particular run in order to have them active. But the second report that you can print is the printing guide. And that's a quick guide for those standing on the press room floor because you want some of the values from this to be able to be used by those on the press room floor to aid in printing in the future, sort of aim values and what sort of, you know, numbers you were looking at and you want to stay with uh, run to run on, uh, on, your, on, the, on the press. So again, it's a quick printing guide. It's easy to print out. It's got some great information that summarizes and it also has a number of different areas where you can see it's blank. The purpose for that the purpose for that, especially where you see it says production, is for you to use your production instrument, that's the kind of the name we decided to use in this particular case, to describe the instrument you might use standing at press side, or maybe it's press console style instrument. Um, because the measurements on that instrument may differ from the ones that you used uh, f that you got from the instrument you measured all the P2Ps with. If you measure all the P2Ps with an ISIS or a DTP70 or something, and then when you're printing press side, you have a handheld, this is the opportunity to write in the values from the handheld in case they differ, so that you have production values on a day-to-day -day printing basis. So we are looking at basically one run in Curve.